right, this is OpenStax US History, Chapter 18, Industrialization and the Rise of Big Business, 1870 to 1900. We'll be looking at Section 1, Inventors of the Age. So a key part to driving this industrialization that took place in the post-Civil War years uh, were inventions and inventors, which led to more efficiency in terms of uh, production. Uh, one of the ways in which uh, inventions were incentivized was the U.S. Patent Office. So a patent is a way to protect intellectual property. So if you're an inventor and you invent something incredibly useful, you file it with the Patent Office and they will ensure, uh, you know, generally, that you are going to benefit from that, you know, that nobody else can essentially rip off your idea and create a uh, copycat, essentially. And the number of patents that were issued in the United States increased dramatically. So patents increased uh, by a lot in the years between 1870 and 1900. So a lot of new inventions were being creative. Um, and a lot of this was, uh, you know, tied in with some bigger uh, things happening to American society at the time. So at the time that these inventions were hitting, um, you know, the United States, there was a lot of immigration, which is people arriving from, oh, well, from, from outside the U.S., we'll say that. So a huge population growth. growth. Uh, urbanization, in fact, in this period, you are finding that the urban population is, uh, you know, beginning to gain on the rural population. And by the 1920s, there are more Americans that are actually living in cities as opposed to the farmland. Uh, and industrialization, which is more or less a process to produce more efficiently. And, you know, a lot of this was tied to the invention of the steam engine, which had been invented before the Civil War. Uh, it had replaced all natural sources of power uh, to machine made. Um, but pretty soon new inventions like electricity, especially make this process a little bit easier. So commercial electricity, um, again, this would power things like lights, um, but it could also power things like factories. Whereas before it was steam, uh, steam, you know, heating up water and allowing the pressure to, to go, um, electricity could be produced in power plants and then, you know, transferred to wherever it needed to be. Um, another huge improvement was the invention of the flush toilet or indoor plumbing. Uh, this had a lot to do with improved health. And really just these two things together, and all it takes is kind of a... Um, you know, a stark reminder when the power go out, power goes out, or if your plumbing doesn't work, both of these things led to a big increase in the standard of living, right? Electricity and in indoor plumbing are, are miracles. And again, you know, you only need to be reminded when the power goes out how, um, you know, how important those things are. Uh, there was also other inventions and uh, innovations taking place in other uh, sectors of the economy. So electricity, flush toilets, indoor plumbing, steel was a big one. Two new ways of making steel. So both the Bessemer process and the open hearth process are new ways to make steel. And steel was essentially used in everything from bridges to buildings to automobiles to you know, trains, you know, you name it, steel was used. And this new process, the Bessemer process and the open hearth process uh, increased production. So much more steel was being produced in the United States and actually lowered the price decrease, right? So uh, steel was stronger, it was cheaper, and there was a lot more of it thanks to some new innovative ways of, of creating it. Um, We'll talk about two, actually, uh, yeah, we have two uh, inventors in particular. The first one here is Alexander Graham Bell and his invention of the telephone. Now, prior to Bell's invention, the United States had been or was using telegraph lines. This was invented by Samuel Morse. 
And of course, this is Morse code that's used. And it would be a series of dots and dashes that would send signals elect, you know, through electricity uh, through telegraph lines, and you could communicate over long distances. In fact, a transatlantic cable was laid in 1858 to allow the United States to communicate with Europe uh, instantaneously. And so this was, you know, the ability for the United States to communicate in a very short amount of time, as opposed to how people communicated in the past. And that was, of course, you know, physical. So you'd actually have to send a letter to England to communicate with them. Well, with the transatlantic cable in 1858, now for the very first time in human history, you can practically communicate instantly between the United States and Europe. It makes the world kind of a smaller place. It really was a pretty um, significant invention. But pretty soon the telegraph was improved by the telephone, which is not just a code. This was invented by Alexander Graham Bell. So he invented the telephone. Uh, and then it was much bigger companies and corporations that made the telephone more available. So the American Telephone and Telegraph Company, or AT&T, which is still very much a company today, uh, you know, really helped make the telephone available. All right, help make it available. And a lot of inventions uh, kind of go down that same path. That is, there is an inventor who creates whatever the process is, and then usually somebody who then can make that uh, more widely available to the public, in this case, uh, AT&T. But perhaps the most famous and known inventor of the time was Thomas Edison, right? This is Thomas Edison right here. So we can say probably the most famous, oops, it's not famous, famous inventor. Uh, Thomas Edison was a serial inventor. You know, before he was like 25 years old, he had 2,000 patents already. He created the first modern laboratory at Mellow Park. Uh, so we might call this the first modern, really was an invention lab. And he invited scientists from all around the world there and they promised that they would create one invention a week really kind of gives you an idea of just how strong this innovative culture was. Um, amongst other things that Thomas Edison invented, he invents a lot, you know, a phonograph, which is kind of like a, you know, record player almost. First thing that could play music, he helped invent the motion picture projector, which of course is associated with movies. But his most famous and, and most impactful invention was the incandescent light bulb, right? So this is electric lighting. Whereas before, all lighting was done by open flame, right? Usually sort of an oil, um, oil burning flame. So this was a huge invention. However, Edison struggled more on how to get electricity to the masses so he can invent the light bulb. Instead, it was George Westinghouse and his uh, invention of alternating current as a way of getting electricity to places, oops, over a long distance. So even though Edison invented the light bulb, he was not responsible for inventing the way of transferring that electricity using alternating current, transferring it over long distances, which ultimately helped make electric lighting more available to the American public. 